It's wonderful to see these rounder, fuller, thicker, jigglier virus bodies being not just accepted by their owners, but celebrated. And as y'all are so darn hot, just gorgeous, any notion to the contrary is about profit, not health, not beauty. So the people that were told to stay home when the gyms were closed down so they weren't able to do anything in regards to fitness outside of just casual running and walking, yeah, that's totally to be celebrated. Because, you know, force people to not be able to do the thing they do they like doing to make themselves feel happy is great. I think the better message here should have been, like, it's fine if you gain some weight during the virus because you weren't able to do it, but if you want to go back to things, don't lose your momentum just because everything got closed down. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video for the day. Going back into r slash fat logic, and if you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support, and to see more content like this in the near future, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below to start up the wholesome internet discussions, and if you have not already, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Help the channel get to 60,000 subscribers. Okie dokie, let's go. Currently, the only methods we have to lose weight sustainably for the long term have a 98% failure rate. So even if you are positive that someone could benefit physically from shrinking their body, we don't have a way to actually shrink their body for more than a year or two. What if your body is slim because of genetics and not because you're a superior person? Uh, yeah, metabolism metabolisms do exist. Anybody that thinks that they're superior than somebody else because of the way they look and not how they actually are is kind of a, tra it's, a it's trash. Like, it doesn't matter if you can run a mile in five minutes, you're still a douchebag. People are going to look up to somebody who's actually nice. A study shows weight gain during pandemic positively correlates with still being alive. Right, so that's why uh, obesity is listed as one of the things that get you expedited in the vaccination line, right? I'm just going to put this out here. I love being fat. I love never having to worry about what I eat. I love not having to conform to society's beauty standards. I love that I will never have to go on a diet again because they are boring and make me miserable. And if that means I'm not going to live as long as thin person, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to enjoy the heck out of what life I have left, eat as much cake as I like, and not worry about tomorrow. And if if and when I do get sick, the NHS can take care of me. I pay my taxes. Look, life is supposed to be fun. You do what you want to do, eat what you want to eat. That is completely fine. It is a wake-up call, though, when the doctor tells you you're not going to make it to 40. Formerly fat people and fat people who are currently dieting are often some of the most fatphobic people ever. Why? Because I know what it's like to be fat and I know it sucks because, like, seriously, I don't like having a resting heart rate of 102 while I'm working at a register. And guess what? Do you want to do the whole thing? you want to stay big? That is all you. If you want to change something and you feel like it's an improvement on your life, that is also you. Don't shame somebody else just because they want to do something different with their life. You are supposed to eat every two to three hours so your body doesn't go into starvation mode and store the fat for survival. This isn't realistic. Yes, it is. I do believe it is actually called intermittent fasting. Correct me if I'm wrong, like, about the term and all of it, but when you're doing those two to three hours everything, it's supposed to be much smaller stuff, not a Big Mac every two to three hours. It's supposed to keep your metabolism going, so you're always in a state of burning calories, right? Okay, hear me out. A doctors with BMI restrictions shouldn't operate on fat people because they clearly don't have the skills to do so. Oh, yes, because the person that went to doctor school for multiple years and got a PhD frickin' D definitely does not know more than you. Like how diabetes, heart disease, etc. are portrayed as only what you eat and how much you exercise illnesses, rather than a natural response to stress, complex and unaddressed historical trauma, environmental racism, toxic and violent masculinity, racism, etc. Why was this whole thing made? Was the genetics card overused? She's prettier in the before picture. Why do people starve themselves when they're before? Her body is goals for many obese women. You're really out here saying that her after photo is the exact same thing can be used as b-roll footage for those third world country documentaries with the starving children? One of the biggest obstacles to fat people doing sports is prejudice and access. For instance, most sports equipment in Europe have an official weight limit of 100 kilos, 200 pounds, and there's nothing available for those over 100 kilos. So things like skates, 
skates, skis, skateboards, shoes, even protection like helmets are literally designed to exclude fat people, and it's pure prejudice. Of course, fat people can skate and skateboard or run or ski or do whatever sport they want to do. So why is so much critical equipment only designed for a person under 100 kilos? I understand that it's a safety thing, but it's silly that that's the cutoff and that there's literally nothing available for those over the cutoff without even more jacked up prices. Sporting and safety equipment is already prohibitively expensive for people without the fat tax. For a society where everyone is concerned about a fat person's health, a funny how hard it is to find equipment for fat bodies. Everyone deserves to do sports safely, not just those under 100 kilos. That is true, everyone does need safety equipment when doing sports. However, riddle me this. With a person weighing more, the safety equipment needs to be able to hold their weight, with such as skis and everything. They need to be made of a higher quality material. Higher quality material, which is stronger, costs more because it's meant to withstand more force against it. Appetite suppressant ideas. Food, 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 food. The only way to make a hunger cue or a food craving go away is to nourish it. You have permission to feed yourself whatever you want, however much you want, whenever you want. The person who made this meme isn't fat positive, so I won't tag their account. You can find it within the meme if you really need to know. I do not promote weight loss of fitness enthusiasts. Sometimes people do get the whole hunger mixed up with thirsty kind of feeling because they pretty much do feel the same. And really, the whole however much you want, you do mean like every time you get just a little hint of being hungry, you can down two pizzas and feel fine with it. I feel like this person saw the Hobbit's eating schedule from Lord of the Rings and thought that was a good idea. For anybody wondering for a legitimate way to help get rid of any hungry feelings throughout the day, fiber is a pretty good way to start. Friendly reminder that fat is often preferential to words like overweight, oh, which imply there is a weight at which someone should exist by implying they are over that weight. I know it seems like overweight slash obese would be preferential because they are scientific, but the science behind the BMI is not really that scientific and very racist, and are often used to pathogenize fat people so they don't have access to care jobs society at large. Hello, I'm 17, nearly 18, and weighed roughly 216 pounds. I eat about 1600 calories a day, mostly meats, cheese, fruits, and veggies. Both of my parents have type 2 diabetes, and I really don't want to develop type 2 diabetes. I want to eat what my body needs to be healthy. School is very stressful and I don't exercise hardly at all. What can I do to become healthier? Thanks! And the answer is as follows. Well, my dear, if you read my most recent posts, you will see that a young person your age and size needs to be eating about double what you are currently eating. So eat more would be my main advice. Throw your scale in the garbage would be my second piece of advice. And third, learning about weight-inclusive models for health, like health at every size, see my haze tag for learning more. But more generally, and contrary to what you may think you know, type 2 diabetes is not caused by your eating and exercise habits. It is primarily a disease of social adversity caused by the physiological changes that can accompany poverty, food insecurity, and social marginalization in people who are genetically susceptible. See my T2 diabetes tag for more. If this sounds like your family's experience, perhaps the best thing you can do is support your health is to educate yourself about the societal determinants of health and to join local community organizations working towards health justice. I say this because believe that for many of us, our only choice in life are to rebel against societal expectations or wither and die trying to conform. And this includes attempting to conform with dominant models of health that actively exclude fat bodies, racialized bodies, disabled bodies, LGBTQ plus bodies at all. I choose to rebel. I hope you do too. That is quite literally the opposite of what the person asked for. Whenever I used to see people's weight loss progress photos, I'd feel a bit envious. I'd feel like I should lose some weight, and I'd be jealous that they are losing weight. But now I feel sad. I feel sad they are objectifying themselves in this way, a thread. While we share photos of our bodies while focusing on and mentioning things like weight loss, we are treating our bodies as ornaments to be viewed and enjoyed. We are saying, 
look, I'm improving the sight of my body for your viewing pleasure. If you are reading this and thinking, no, I'm getting healthier and I'm proud, so I want to show everyone, weight does not equal health, my friend. You can't physically see health. If it's truly about health, and then show us pictures of your improved lab test, blood pressures, etc. I mean, they don't normally print it out, but I bet if you asked for it, they'd be able to print out your results. The other big issue with sharing a weight loss progress photos publicly is that 95% of the time, you'll end up gaining weight back. The shame in weight gain is a lot greater when you know that you made sure everyone noticed you had lost weight in the first place. And just a reminder that you are so much more than your body. Your weight defines nothing about you. It literally defines what you can physically do. And I can say for a fact, I have before and after photos, and I'm using that as motivation to be able to get back down to there. So this time, I actually know what I'm going to look like when I get back down there. In a nutshell, it eliminates the fear of the unknown factor. I know for a fact that I'm going to have saggy skin. I know that's a, that's pretty much a given whenever anybody loses a significant amount of weight. But that doesn't mean unhealthy. It means that you made progress. But with that, that is going to have to be it with the video. If you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support, and to see more videos like this in the near future, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and if you have not already, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.